Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Technology Tuesday. Greg Russell, Jerry Franklin Poe. Topic today is your funnel profitable. Go ahead and hit him with the video, Greg. Right. Well, welcome to Technology Tuesday at two. And today we're going to be talking about funnels, marketing funnels, sales funnels. What's the difference between the two? And is your funnel actually working for you? More importantly, are you using your funnel as a substitute for maybe a, a lack of human interaction, personal skills, talking to people? Because I feel some folks, just to my opinion, some folks may be using the technology to create a barrier between themselves and the skill sets that they haven't actually developed yet. So they, they haven't figured out how to sell and to market, but they know if they can get a funnel because people have been talking about funnels. If they get one of those, then they should still be able to get results. But what yeah. Greg and I have found through our experiences working with our own businesses and with our clients is there's no way around knowing how to sell to people. There's no way around learning how to market to people. And that the tool, the funnel, is an extension of what you already know. The, t the funnel is an extension of the skill set you already have. So if you don't have the skill set to begin with, it doesn't matter how many funnels you have. <laughs> you know, like it's not going to work with you. If you don't, if you don't, if you have a car but you never learn how to drive, the car is not going to help you out. You might you might be able to get behind the wheel, but you're probably going to wreck somewhere. <laughs> So, <laughs> so great. You better pretend uh, you're driving somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you, you could like you could pretend. Yeah, you could sit and park. Right, you can sit and park, and but you're not getting anywhere. Right, you're not going to go anywhere. So, Greg, when you think of funnels, like what's the first thing you think people should know or or need to know about the process? Well, I think that a lot of times uh, people use the term funnel for a whole lot of different things. And a lot of times, at least when I'm having conversations and people say they want to funnel, you know, I want to get real clear on exactly what they want. Because um, first of all, there's two types of funnels, right? There's a, a marketing funnel and then there's a sales funnel. And a lot of times they kind of uh, think of one funnel, merge both of those together. And that's the thing they want. They want something that will kind of do the selling online for them 24 hours a day without any human interaction. Um, and the truth is it's possible, but it's not likely. Um, a lot of times, you know, you know, the dream is to have this thing running without you that makes money all the time. And a lot of people don't realize what really goes into setting something like that up because there's so many um, videos and gurus and people saying they have a funnel that's making them money. But the reality of it is most of the time a funnel uh, for a lot of people doesn't do them anything at all because they don't really know what really goes into it in the first place. So what I think I want to do is have a discussion with you about what really goes into a funnel. Uh, what does that look like? And how would you know if your funnel is profitable before you even build one, right? And that's kind of what a lot of people don't even think about doing. But when it comes to anything else like that you're going to build, like you start with a blueprint, right? You start with the plans. You'd be like, here's the plans. Um, and when we finish, this is what the outcome is going to be. But a lot of times people say, oh, I want a funnel and I want it to do this and I want it to do this and I want it to do this. And it doesn't end up producing what they ultimately want. Because at the end of the day, it sounds like you're saying to me that the technology is the tool, but you have to know how to use the tools properly. Exactly. And if you don't know how to use the tools properly. So if we separate the technology, if we, so like last week, we, I had an issue with power, right? They had no power because there was a storm that came through, flash flooding, all this stuff that's outside of our control. So you don't have the stuff that we rely on, right? We, we don't realize until it's taken away how much we rely on technology, electricity, power, because we just, it's, it's always right. there. So we just take it for granted. But when you take all that stuff away, you strip it down to like the bare essence of the thing. Even without power, even without the technology, a person could still market a business or sell 
because they've been we've been doing these things for years. People were marketing products and selling products before there was the internet, before there was video, before there was a telephone. So what happens is sometimes the technology becomes a crutch yep. for something that pe- that a person didn't develop already. Yep. And yep. those who become successful with the technology are the ones who've already developed the skill set without the technology. Right. So a person who has a funnel that from what I, from what you were saying earlier, right? A person who has a, a successful sales funnel. So their sales funnel is profitable, right? Let's just say profitable. Forget about successful, profitable, because it really comes down to what is it bringing in in terms of revenue and how much money are you keeping? Because there's always going to be expenses involved in the in the whole entire process. So a person who's going to be profitable with it is someone who knows how to build it based off of not having the technology. So they knew without the technology, I would do this, 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 and this. And now with the technology, I can automate that. Right. And I think people are looking to skip steps. They're like, how do I get to the automation? But I didn't learn first how did the process even worked. Right. Right. So let's let's talk about that. Like, you know, so for when I when I think about that, I think about what was a funnel like before the internet, right? And right. so I think about old school, like what did the guys before me do? And I think about when they talk about their Rolodex, right? And have this Rolodex. And so I think about, well, you know, let's take something like a refrigerator, right? So if you were oh, a refrigerator- hold, on, hold on a second, hold on, man. <laughs> hold on. Like, do I don't know if everybody listening knows what a Rolodex, know what Rolodex is. <laughs> they do not even know what that is, right? They're like, Rolodex? What's a Rolodex? <laughs> Where can I download that app, right? <laughs> Oh, you took man. it back. You took it back to the yeah, roller deck, boy. Yeah, and the reason flipping, flipping through the cars, flipping exactly, through the cars. Exactly. And the reason why is because you know a lot of the the terminology and things we use online, most of it came from offline. So when you understand where it came from, it gives you a better understanding right. of what it actually is, right? So this whole thing it was a funnel. Back in the day, you had a Rolodex, and a Rolodex could be just to say a box of index cards separated by folders, right? And those folders could be months. And so let's say you sold a refrigerator to Sam Jones, right? So you that first year, you take it out of that, you know, you have a card for Sam and you put it in next year. And the next year, when that date comes around, you would call Sam Jones and ask him, how's it going? And you'd see if there's any parts he'd need or whatever, right? And so this Rolodex was a way for you to follow up on contacts, right? Follow up on people who were customers, follow up on people who were prospects, right? Somebody comes into the store, they in question about a refrigerator, you create a card for them and you may follow up in one week or one month. You put it in this in this little box and your your job that day as a sales guy would go to the section that you need to go through that day, grab those stack of cards and contact those people, right? So old school sales funnel is basically just automated now. You want certain people at certain times where they are in the process to be contacted about whatever your product or service is. At the end of the day, that's what a funnel does, whether that person's a prospect and doesn't have your product, whether that person is a customer and does have your prospect. The whole idea of a funnel is consistent follow up and stay in contact with those people. So once you understand that, when it starts to relate it to the technology, okay, now this is what I want to do. You know, that's what I want to do then you have a better understanding of what a funnel actually is and how it actually should function. Right. So if you wrap that up, it's basically you're saying that the funnel was your methodology for communicating with a person who had already shown interest in your business. Yes. Yep. So to... Go ahead. Technically, that would be the marketing funnel, right? So you'd have someone who, you know, in that example, they came into the store and they looked at a refrigerator. So in that card, you may say, hey, they looked at the Samsung, this model, right? And so in that card, when you call them, you're like, hey, are you still interested in the Samsung, right? You know, and if there's any information, they have a new model coming out or that model's now on sale or it will be on sale, right? You know that they're interested in that particular model or that particular thing, right? as opposed to a stove or a different kind of refrigerator. So right. Again, so, the, yeah, the marketing funnel basically lets you um, be top of mind for people who are interested in a specific thing. And then when that translates awesome. online, it's done with you know landing pages and opt-ins. That's kind of how people raise their hand and create a little card in your database. So are you saying the funnel 
one of the purposes of a funnel, if we get if we get down to like what's the purpose, the purpose of the funnel was to have Toma top of mind awareness. For the for the marketing funnel. For the marketing funnel. Yes. Yeah. Top of mind awareness. Yep. Definitely. Right. So the point. marketing funnel was designed to see where the person is in the process or to re-engage them in the process to see if they're still interested in a thing that they had initially shown interest in in order to yeah. lead to a sale down the road. Correct. Correct. Yep. And so then when you start to think about this in terms of today and online, right, that's why people create what they call lead magnets. These are some sort of typically informational type product where you're saying, hey, are you interested in this? Give me your information and I'll give you this tip sheet or report or video. And that's basically them saying, yes, I'm interested in that and allows you to put them in a database where you can then automatically follow follow up the same way you would if you were an old school guy using it and using the uh, <laughs> Rolodex, the right. cards in the box. <laughs> right, right. So at the end of the day, a person needs to even, they need to know, a person would have to know why they're even creating a funnel. So before I even get to like, what does my funnel do or how do I build it? It's like, what am I, why am I doing this? Like, what's the purpose of me doing this? What am I trying to get from the person that I want to even put in the funnel? So if you don't know the reason why you're doing it, then it, the lack of the, the profitability is going to be diminished because yep. you yep. don't know where you're going. You, have to, yep. you definitely want to end. <laughs> you definitely want to start with the end in mind. Like, what do you want to accomplish? Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, information travels so fast on the internet, it gets diluted and people don't really understand where certain things come from or what they mean. So a lot of times I've heard uh, a lot of smart marketers and gurus say that the money's in the list and you need to build the list. And so then you get people who hear that, but don't understand why. And then they start building a list and then they don't understand how to make that profitable for them because they didn't get the full story. They just got build a list which means I can make money. So they start building a list and then they go, okay, now what? Um, but if you would have started with understanding what you're doing, you know, what you really want to do, then when you started building that list, you would have immediately had things for uh, that system to do, which would have generate profits for you. Right. It's like coming to the beginning of the movie and then it is left. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I got it. I got the idea. I got it. Right. Yeah, it's like right. you didn't yeah. see that you didn't follow the whole the whole story. Like it's, yep, exactly. it's got the first opening part. Like, oh, he got a lightsaber. I got it. I got it. <laughs> you never find exactly. out that Darth Vader was the father. You know what I mean? So you, never, <laughs> you never get to exactly. that part. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Because because we know that that is true. There's truth in the fact that there is, you know, the profitability is in your list, but the profitability of your list is in the quality of the people on it. So you can have a big list, but if the people on that list aren't the right people for you, aren't interested in what you have or what you want, then it's not going to be effective. Exactly. So here's the thing, man, when it comes to, you know, selling and 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 cuz at the end of the day, nobody makes any money unless something is sold, right? right. And whether you that you like that or that or that has some sort of uh, irritation for you. That's 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 the truth, right? Selling doesn't have to be a bad thing because we all had experiences with people who didn't uh, treat sales properly and they started forcing information on us that we didn't want to hear. That's not sales. That's abuse, right? So, but good selling is when you're only talking to people who want to hear the information. And when you can sell and you and you learn the skill of selling and you know how to talk to people and ask the right questions and tell the right stories so that they come to the conclusion on their own that they want your product or service. When you can do that, then you can take all that that you understand about how to sell that product or service. And then you can start to put it in a digital format where you can then digitize it and set it up so people can go through the proper steps, learn the certain things and get sold through a process that you have taken from what you used to do in person and put it online. The challenge is most people don't know how to do that. So they struggle with putting it together online that actually works for them. Right. Uh, for a lot of people, sales is about force. Yep. And what they don't realize is sales is not force, but sales is giving people an opportunity to buy because no one likes to be sold, but people want to buy. So selling is giving people the opportunity to buy from you. That's what it really is about. And 
a lot of people are trying to force someone to do something rather than creating a space for a person to make a decision based on the needs and the problems that you solve for them. Yep. Yep. I, 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 found, really, I found it really easy for, for me when I learned that uh, only talk to people who are interested, right? If they're not interested, don't talk to them. So, you know, for me, <laughs> you know, hey, uh, do, you know, and it could be real laid back. Do you know anyone who's interested? Like, even if I want to know if they're interested, I never ask them directly, hey, do you know any in, anyone who'd be interested in X, Y, Z, whatever that product or service is with? If they say no, that's the end of that discussion, right? Because they let you know that they not only do they not interested, but they don't even know anyone who's interested. So there's no right. more conversation to be had, right? That, that's That's a dead lead. You move on. What you will find out is somebody will say, hey, yeah, I'm interested. And then you have a very simple answer. Would you like to know more about, right? And they give, then they say yes. So now you ask them if they're interested. They said yes. And now you can have a conversation about it. Because if they don't do those two things, then you're what you're doing is putting people in that uncomfortable position that you don't like to be in when they're talking to you about something that you don't have any interest. You kind of expressed that you didn't have any interest. And now it's not a sales conversation. It's 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 that nasty thing that everyone associates sales with because they had that experience. But that's not selling. Selling is only talking to people who say, "Yes, I'm interested. I want to know more." Yeah. Like, well, my philosophy is ABS: always be serving. So selling is is serving, and that means you're solving a problem for a person or taking care of a need that they have. And if there's no problem or need that they have, then there's no need for us to have a conversation about my product or service. So if you're serving the person, then you're looking to see how can I help them. And when you're looking to help people, then it makes it easier for people to want to buy from you. And that I think was a process. I think that's what it really comes down to. We want to simplify the whole process, the funnel process, knowing that there's two funnels, a marketing funnel and acquisition. Would you, would you, hey, you froze. You still with us? Yep, I got you loud and clear. Get yeah, that last sentence one more time. So I said there are the two funnels, right? So one funnel, uh, the marketing funnel, the other funnel is a sales funnel. If you simplify it, one is about attraction and one is about acquisition. Mm -hmm. So the marketing funnel is to attract a person to you to see if they're interested, and then the sales funnel is then now how do we acquire them? as a customer by sorting to see if there is a problem that we could solve for them because selling is really sorting to see if there is a problem for this person and the, and the funnel part of the funnel is the sales funnel we we're talking about is to sort to see where does this person match up where do we match up in terms of what i have and the problems that they have the value that i provide to the marketplace and the problems and the needs that are in their lives and how do we match those up? How do we match it up? So if you think about it is how do I attract people with, you know, with a marketing funnel and then how do I acquire them as a customer? That's the sales funnel that I think that simplifies the process for people a little bit. Yep. Yep. And, you know, I've had lots of conversations with my clients who want a funnel. And when we start to lay out, uh, you know, the, all the aspects, right? Just like a blueprint. So they're like, let's talk about it. What do you want to do? I lost you want to you, sell Greg. this product? Volume. Okay. How do you want to sell that product? Do you want to sell it where you have to talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, where you want an appointment? You want someone to schedule a, a call with you? Do you want them to, you know, watch a video and just buy? Like what, what's the sales mechanism, right? Identify the sales mechanism, the thing that happens right before someone buys, right? So if you think about it, anytime and you've had your own experiences, you bought stuff, right? What was the one thing that happened right before you bought? So typically, it's either you watch some sort of, when it comes to internet marketing, it's typically you either watch some sort of video presentation or read some sort of long sales form letter um, or had a conversation uh, with someone because you scheduled to be on their calendar and, and spoke with them. So typically, those are the two that... Um, the, the most popular two that that drive sales. Those are typically the sales mechanism. There's others, but those are the two. And so then you're like, all right, so then what do we need to do to make that thing happen as many times as possible? And that's the sales funnel. Everything leads up to getting either people to that video or to schedule that thing. And that's what you build in front. And we actually have a tool and tools that we use 
to map out the whole thing, it's just like a blueprint to say, okay, you need X number of people to come to this website. You need X number of people opt in and here are the numbers and here's your, um, what you want to happen, right? To get to your goal. And here's your worst case scenario. Meaning if you don't hit these numbers, you lose money on this sales funnel. And when we present that to them and we say, okay, now let's go. If we build this, this is what you got to do. And this is what we got to do. And this is how much it's going to cost to get this traffic to the site. And if they're either not willing to get to, to, to get that traffic because they're not even going to pay for it, or they're not willing to do the work required to get the traffic. So if they need to be doing Facebook lives or emailing their list or whatever, at the end of the day, we can look at and say, Hey, here's where our goal, this is what we tried to achieve. You know, this is where you're at. You either didn't get enough traffic or um, you did get enough traffic and this is not converting and you can, you can break it down piece by piece and fix what's not working in the funnel. And once you can do that, you can fine tune it and get it working where now all you can do is um, generate and drive traffic to a profitable funnel. Most people do not have the patience <laughs> or the understanding of what it takes to really set up a profitable marketing funnel. So if your funnel's not working, um, or you have one and it's not producing the results you want, you need to get in there and start looking at the things that make it work, that make it work. And if you're struggling with that um, and you don't know how to do that, then you should uh, get in touch with me or Jerry and let us help you work the kinks out of your funnel so you can have a profitable right. asset to your business. Yeah, man. I, I think the, the problem for a lot of people is the testing before the automation. So they want to get everybody wants to get to the automation, right? They want to get to the dollars as quickly as profit as quickly as possible, right? How do I get to this target as quickly as possible? But there's a there's stuff that you have to get through before you, you get there. Yeah. It, it's almost like, you know, they want that they want that picture. If you look in the fitness industry, right? The fitness was always like the before <laughs> and after photos. They want that after yeah. photo, right? You want the after photo, but there's like a whole thing in between to get there and before you can automate something, it has to be tested enough times to know if it actually works. It yeah. has to be tested over and over again to see if it's proven. It, there's no reason to automate something and put it on repeat and autopilot if you haven't proven it works. And that platform that you were talking about, I did, did you want to say the name? Because I don't think you dropped the name. I did. Not um, yeah, man, you can drop the name. You know, that's so not- it's a, a okay. Giru. That's G E R U dot com. Giru is this online software service, which makes it, you know, the calculator part to it is what's phenomenal. You know, being able to lay out a funnel, but then simulate the experience of what would happen if you put it live and put it into action. So it's like, okay, this is going to happen based on the numbers. And to see everything go through and calculate it without having to get out, you know, an Excel spreadsheet or calculate it yourself and map it all out. It's the fact that you can simulate the results and see where there could be an issue or where there could be a problem and make adjustments based off of your your structure, your blueprint is the amazing part about it. So you can compare what would happen under different scenarios. If I if I did the things this way. What would the results be if I did it this way and get and get instant instant you know testing of what would happen if you plug things in if I did this number of ads or whatever? To me, that that's the thing that's phenomenal about it to actually see the metrics or the numbers in a live simulation before you actually put it into the marketplace yep. to yep. to know for for real what's going to happen. Yep. Uh, I I haven't seen anything else like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really phenomenal that way. Um, it's not really a, a tool for uh, the beginners, um, but it's something right. you can definitely plug in um, and use. It's something we use with our clients. Um, but the other thing too, Jerry, is that usually when you tell people what it really takes to to test, right? Even once you have it all mapped out, I usually tell people take the the price, whatever you're charging for your price, times it by eight, and that's what your testing budget is, right? Because usually, <laughs> usually. Um, and, and that number may scare some people, but at the end of the day, it's like, look, if you can sell this thing over and over and over, you know, then this, you know, that's typically what it's going to take for you to figure out all those little pieces that's going to make, make it work. 
Um, and if you're not willing to do that, then you're just gambling, right? You're just, you're just trying stuff and you're not really going at it about a way that can give you the results you want. But usually it's, it's usually the testing is, is whatever you, whatever you're trying for the product times it by eight. And that's, that's, that's your budget. You need to start with that. If you work it right and you have the right team that can manage those numbers and look at the certain pieces of the funnel and keep reinvesting the profits, you can come out with a very nice, successful, profitable funnel. And that's what it really takes. And I'm sorry, a lot of guys with their products and services will never tell you the truth about that. They won't tell you, say, hey, you have to put X number of dollars in just to test. You know, they, they're they not going to tell you about it because that's not sexy. Nobody wants to hear that. And that number may even scare you. But that's the reality of the, you know what you're really dealing with here. Yeah. And so as, as we we bring it to the close, as Greg said, there are no shortcuts. That's ultimately what it comes down to is that there are no shortcuts to the process. You can't shortcut the process. So folks, I want to thank you again for watching. If this was beneficial to you, two things, join the group technologytuesday.com if you're not already a member. And number two, share this out with your friends, share this out with your family, share this out with other people that you know who are serious about business and serious about getting the results in their life, those folks who want practical application, practical knowledge, and practical solutions so they can make a big impact in the world without having to do a lot of equity, sweat equity is what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Without a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of, you know, we want to eliminate some of the headaches for you because Greg and I have already gone through the headaches. And you can see the results. My hair is getting gray on the sides. You really might be minimal about seeing on the camera. But, you know, you can see that we're not as young as we used to be, that this business thing, it ages you a little bit. So <laughs> a little bit, man, just a little bit, just a little bit. Right. A little bit. See, I, I Greg got his beard. On. I cut my beard off because it's the grays. I don't like those grays down there. <laughs> yeah, I cut it off. So with that, folks, I'll, we'll see you again next Tuesday on the other side. Technology Tuesday at two. Yep. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. Take care. <laughs>